Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again tonight with another video, and I have some great news, probably for the first time in a while for Thunder fans. The Oklahoma City Thunder are going to have two lottery picks in this year's draft. With the Pelicans win over the Clippers, the Pelicans are advancing to the NBA playoffs, so a quick shout out to them. But also, and more importantly for me, the Clippers are not making the playoffs, and the Thunder have their pick unprotected. It will be at worst number 12 with a like a 1% chance to jump up, so it's not going to happen, but you know, there always is that possibility, but at least the Thunder will have pick 12. And that is amazing. That's huge for this team because this is one of the first picks coming from that trade that the Thunder made giving the Clippers Paul George, where they got all those first round picks. This was the first year where we had like this unprotected pick and it's already a lottery pick. So that is huge for this Thunder team, bringing in another elite level talent in this draft. It's super, super exciting. It gives them more ammo to trade up if they don't want to take two rookies in the lottery combining. Say we get like pick four and we want to get into that top three or even get up to two or one. Now we've got pick 12, pick whatever that one is, and pick 30 from the Phoenix Suns. So three first round picks, two of them in the lottery. This is huge. Uh, Clippers fans, I want to apologize. It's literally nothing personal. I just want to see the Thunder succeed at this point. This game was super weird, and it was a really up and down emotional roller coaster. I'm sure not just for me, but for a lot of Thunder fans, and I'm sure Pelicans and Clippers fans too. The Pelicans went up really big in this one. Up, they were up by like 16, and they were up by around 10 at half. And then the Clippers outscored them by 20 points in the third quarter, 38 to 18, to have this double digit lead heading into the fourth. And then the Pelicans outscored them by 14 in the fourth to win by four points. It was a crazy, ridiculous game. Ingram started off super hot, then lost all ability to really score the basketball and then he kind of picked it back up later CJ McCollum started to take over Larry Nance Jr. looked like Dennis Rodman out there there, of course, there was no Paul George in this game due to the health and safety protocols, but it does matter because Tyron Lue is one of the best coaches in the league, and he kept the Clippers in this one all the way up until the end. They had a huge lead. They just couldn't hold on. They're just kind of outmatched by the Pelicans' talent. If they had Paul George, the Clippers win this game, but they didn't, and so the Pelicans came out on top. Shout out to the young Pelicans. Ingram, CJ keeps his playoff streak alive. He's never missed the playoffs, and that stays true. Um, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, two great rookies that played big minutes. Same with Jose Alvarado. He put some huge minutes in this one too. They put a lot of young guys in this one and coach Willie Green had this incredible speech heading into the fourth quarter to rally the troops, get them back into this one. He trusted the young guys. They really rewarded him for it and it was super cool to see. As a Thunder fan watching my team go through a rebuild, this is exciting. I love seeing young teams succeed. So shout to the Pelicans. And of course, shout to the Clippers. Uh, they had a crazy great season for all the injuries that they had. They put up a crazy fight in this one, despite not having Paul George. If Paul George and Kawhi are healthy, they're going to be one of the biggest championship contenders next season. So this year isn't anything too crazy for them. Thunder get an extra lottery pick. I'm super stoked about this. There's so many different possibilities we can use with it. It's just really amazing, giving us that, just that small little extra chance. And now, even if the Thunder's pick falls, because the lowest it can fall is about eight. So even if it somehow falls to eight, that means that the Clippers pick kind of gives us some ammo to move up, or at least we have 8 and 12. In the literal worst case scenario, having picks 8 and 12 in the draft is a pretty great worst case scenario. So this is just huge for the rebuild. Uh, I am super ecstatic. It's been a weird season. Of course, the Thunder, not they're like, like tanking, but not losing as much games as other teams, so they didn't get a top three pick odds. And last year, we had the fourth overall odds and fell to six. So the lottery wasn't kind. We had a chance to have two top five picks in last year's draft. If the Rockets fell, they did not. And so the Thunder only had picked six last year in that lottery. So it's not been a really lucky time to be a Thunder fan. So finally getting some good news, getting some love from the draft gods. Hopefully they reward us in the lottery. That's, that's going to be a big moment. I think it's like May 17th. So it's coming up really fast. It's like just about a month away. So if you want to mark your calendars, go ahead and do it. But I'm really excited. This just kind of gives me a little bit of a boost heading into the off season not seeing any playoff basketball from the Thunder, you know, just a nice thing to see. So yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. It's awesome. It's nice to get something lucky because the Thunder have been kind of cursed as of recently, been pretty unlucky with a lot of different things. I won't even get into it, all the things that are happening. Um, but yeah, so just super psyched about that. It's nice to have some luck every once in a while and hope that carries over to the draft lottery. I will quickly mention the Hawks-Cavs game. 
because uh, the Hawks moved on to the NBA playoffs, winning 107 to 101 against the Cavs. Uh, Clint Capella was out at half with a knee injury. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I believe it said that they believe he hasn't sustained something serious, but I guess we'll kind of see that he's getting an MRI tomorrow. They'll need him against the Miami Heat if he's able to play. Um, Trey Young went berserk. He had like six points, I believe, in the first half. In the second half, he was just unstoppable. He couldn't miss. He was playmaking incredibly. He ended up with 38 and nine assists. Uh, you also had 19 from Bogdanovich. Great defense from DeAndre Hunter with 10 points. Uh, 13 from Kevin Herter. And really, the most unsung hero of this game is DeLon Wright. That man was playing like prime Gary Payton on defense against Darius Garland, who really struggled offensively in this game, in large part due to the defense of DeLon Wright. The Hawks were kind of similar to the situation with the Pelicans, the Hawks went down big in this one. They really turned it around right when they needed to, in big part due to Trey Young, due to the defense of DeLon Wright, due to the defense of DeAndre Hunter, and some clutch shots hit by some other guys. Anyeka Okungwu played some really solid minutes when Clint Capella went out for the game, so shout to the whole Hawks roster. They really made things count, and Trey Young's just one of those like special talents. Every time he plays, in these big moments especially, he just steps up in such a big way. Even if he's struggling, he still finds ways to impact the game in a way that's going to help his team win. It's something that the more you watch Trey Young, the more you realize that he's just so special. There are very few players in the league that impact the game in a lot of different facets like he does. There are a lot of people talking about Trey Young's defense because Darius Garland is kind of cooking him to start this game. But to be honest, when you impact the offensive side of the game as much as Trey Young does, it really doesn't matter because Trey Young as long as you have like a good big down low to protect the rim and some solid wing defenders like the Hawks do have, it's going to be fine because Trey Young's going to give up some points every now and again, but he's also going to hit like four 30 foot bombs from the logo shimmy and then wave goodbye to the home crowd. Like Trey Young's going to do all of that in the game. Who cares if he can't play great defense? Trey is a special talent. So shout to him. He was phenomenal in terms of the Cavaliers. It sucks. I hate that their season had to end this way because the Cavs were one of the most fun stories of the season. Of course, Evan Mobley coming in and being an immediate impact rookie, Darius Garland being a most improved player ca candidate, Jared Allen proving that his contract, he was worthy of it. Uh, Laurie Markkinen was a surprise, especially in this game. He had 26 points and eight or eight rebounds, not eight assists. He had zero of those. Not a great passer, Laurie Markkinen, but overall, he was phenomenal in this game for them. He was their best and most consistent scorer. They had the injuries to Ricky Rubio, Colin Sexton this season, so they didn't have either of those guys. They just they Jared Allen was only like 50% in this game. He only like he played 35 minutes, but it was clear that he was not up to his usual caliber with that broken finger. The Cavs really just kind of got screwed by injuries. And so it sucks that they're not going to be in the playoffs. Their home crowd was ridiculous in this one. They were going absolutely insane. There was like a couple times when the Cavs would hit a three and the mics in the stadium were like legitimately like clipping. Like the audio was cutting out because the crowd was so loud and it was super fun to watch that atmosphere. Really? The playing tournament as a whole, pretty much all of the crowds were, Brooklyn maybe a little bit less, but almost all of the crowds were incredible. A lot of really fun young teams in this. I think that's kind of why the crowds were so good. You had the Timberwolves crowd, the Clippers crowd was great tonight, uh, the Cavaliers crowd. You just had some amazing crowds in this one cheering for their teams. Uh, the Pelicans crowd was great too, uh, the Atlanta Hawks. It was just a really nice like fan environment. And I think really as a whole, the playing tournament went super, super well. Most of these games were super fun, especially these two tonight. Uh, those first two games were phenomenal as well. We saw a lot of great matchups. We saw a lot of fun moments, some young stars emerging and continuing to emerge, showing what they're made of. And that really is kind of what the playing tournament is about, giving teams that might not have a chance to get into the playoffs otherwise getting in, which is exactly what both the Hawks and the Pelicans did. Um, I don't believe we've had a seven and eight seed make it in yet from the playing tournament. I'm trying to remember who made it in last year. No, the Celtics and Wizards made it in. So that happened in the Eastern Conference, but in three out of four playing tournament like brackets we've seen in the last like couple years, it's been a nine and a seven seed that have made it in. So teams are taking advantage of it. It's cool to see these young teams that 
have like this hype around them. They're fun. They're really hungry to make it into the playoffs and getting this opportunity. I don't think the Pelicans or Hawks win in the first round. I think the Hawks give the Heat maybe a little bit of a series depending on if John Collins and Clint Capella get healthier. But overall, I don't expect either team to win. But even still, it's a really fun and nice environment for these young teams to kind of get some experience. Of course, the Hawks have already been to the Eastern Conference Finals, so a little less so for them. But especially in terms of like the Pelicans getting that chance to, for those young guys, like Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, getting that chance to kind of go through learn a little bit about themselves in this context, grow, and then be ready for maybe a leap next season. It could be huge for them. So overall, I think the playing tournament was a super fun success. Over the past couple of years, I've really become a fan of it after being someone who was in favor of it, but was kind of iffy on it. I am completely sold. The playing tournament's awesome, but that's all I have to say on these games. I appreciate y'all watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the playing tournament and these games as a whole. Um, if you made it to this point in the video, say, uh, shout out or like, Pray to the lottery gods. Uh, <laughs> drop that in the comment section below for me to give me some luck heading into the draft lottery for the Thunder. But for right now, I will see you all later. I appreciate you watching. Real one, say it back.